Okay, so think about some of the most impactful speeches that we've ever heard in society. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. I mean the kind of speeches that have literally changed the course of human nature. In Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. It can be something that someone who is evil said. Or it can be something that kind of galvanizes a whole country. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, none of those things compare to the impactfulness of this statement, this phrase. It literally is the most impactful phrase or statement or sentence, however you want to call it, the most impactful uh, exchange of words ever in the history of mankind. Sounds strange to make this point, and you're probably going to be surprised as to who actually said it. You're probably going to say, well, maybe it was something that Jesus said. Now, are they impactful? Sure. But when I say most impactful, I mean in terms of who are the most affected by this? Jesus' words are the most impactful. The Lord's words are the most impactful as it relates to Christians, but Christians are not the majority. The most impactful words, the words that have changed the course of history, the words that changed the direction, the, tra the trajectory of mankind, so much so that the overwhelming majority of human beings on the planet are affected by this phrase because we've adopted this phrase, because we won't accept what Jesus says, what the Lord says. What's that statement? Did God say? In the garden, the serpent, the devil shows up and he has this phrase to the woman and he says, did God say? Now, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, has God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden, the woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden, we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it or from it, nor touch it. And what does the serpent say? It's just like the first thing he said, you surely will not die. In other words, that's not really it. That's not how, it, that's not what God meant for that. He knows, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open like, he, like him, like his, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit, the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to her eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from it its fruit and ate and gave also to her husband. These are the words that were the most impactful. Why? Because billions and billions and billions and billions of people will now die as a result of this twisting of words, of this changing of words, of this attacking of God's word. And what do we do? What do we see millions of folks doing, billions of folks doing after that? The very same thing. I don't know how many people are going to go to hell. I don't know how many people are going to go to heaven. I do know that the large number will be going to hell than heaven. That part we do know. And it's going to be as a result of this because the word of God is not, is not sufficient. And what he did was he used this speech. He used this statement. He used this phrase to appeal to what we want. Notice she saw that the tree, the fruit was desirable to make one's eyes. She saw that uh, the tree was good for fruit and a delight to the eyes. She liked what she was seeing. She wanted what she was seeing. And the tree was desirable to make one wise. It's not her first time looking at the fruit, but she was obedient. But here comes Satan who does what he does to all of us or tries to do. He tries to tempt us with words. And he, he can only tempt us with words in areas that we could be tempted. For example, you couldn't tempt me with drugs. You couldn't say, here, Corey, how about we go and smoke some marijuana? Here, Corey, how about we go drink some alcohol? Here, Corey, how about we do some, I don't know, some some cocaine or something, some sort of drug, some, some meth or something? No, that doesn't do anything for me. You could not tempt me at all. Now, could you tempt me with some, I don't know, peach cobbler, some banana pudding, something sweet, uh, you might have me. You might you might have me there. And so he's going to tempt all of us with something that we've thought about, we've kind of dreamt about, we've wondered about, we've kind of molded around in our head, chewed it around a little bit, uh, contemplated, 
Hmm, I wonder. Eh, I won't do it, but then here he comes. Remember, he does the exact same thing with Eve and does the exact same thing with Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus in chapter uh, four, verse, let's start in verse one of Luke. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led around by the Spirit into the wilderness and for 40 days being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And he and when they had ended, he became hungry. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, it is written, man should not live by bread alone. So what is Satan doing? He's trying to appeal to something that Jesus would want. He's hungry. His body literally wants food. However, Jesus is showing how you do it. This is how you handle his temptation, how he wants to come and attack. And not only that, he wants to attack using the word. And so he wants to continue that. Matter of fact, notice how later on he, he leads Jesus up and he does so with the word of God. Verse nine, and he led him to Jerusalem and he had, had him stand at the pinnacle or on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said, if you are the son of God, throw down your yourself from him for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against the stone he's quoting passages he's quoting the word of god but he's doing so in a nefarious uh, way why one so that it was so that it will suffice for him but also to tempt jesus and what is Jesus' response as it always is the word of god well you can't give back the word of god if you don't have the word of god and Satan understands that. So what does he want to do? Distort the word of God or take you away from the word of God, which is what he did in the very beginning. Notice uh, in this statement that, that James says in James uh, chapter 113, he says, let no one say that when he is tempted, I am tempted or being tempted by God for God cannot be tempted by evil. And he himself does not tempt you. But each one, look what he says. Each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. You look at something, you see something, you think about something that that's appealing. That makes sense. Think about every brutal dictator. He's got, he can't be a dictator by himself. He's got to have an army of people to follow. He's got to galvanize people. And so what does he do? He appeals to something in them. Maybe the worst that they have. Think about a Hitler. That's what he does. He appeals to the worst. If you think about a Jim Jones, he appeals to the worst. If you think about all those dictators, all those leaders, those wicked leaders, who have done the exact same thing. I don't care if it's a president, the king, or whomever, that's what they have to do. And so that's exactly what Satan does. The problem is, though, we're not holding on to the word of God. That's why he tells us to preach the word of God, whether in season or out of season, be ready to do it all the time because people will not endure sound doctrine. But they will have instead, they will look for someone to preach or teach what they want to hear. They have these, it, these, these ears wanting them to be tickled and so they will turn away from the truth and move to fables. Why? Because it makes him feel good. And so what the devil did at the very beginning is what he's doing now. Twisting the scriptures, twisting what God says, distorting, moving folks away from God's word so that it would appeal to you, ultimately leaving you on the outs, leaving you on the outside. Or possibly you could be a believer and then finding yourself in a world of trouble being punished by the Lord because you wanted to listen to something or someone that appealed to your senses, that appealed to your to your desires. The most impactful thing that he did that ever happened in the world was listening to the lie of the enemy. Don't fall for that because since he's the author and the father of lies, his place is in hell. You do not want to find your place with him. Amen.